the Function with Purpose podcast. All things health, wellness, fitness, and education through the physical therapy perspective. I am Dr. Amy Bullock, owner and founder of Fortress Physical Therapy. Fortress PT is here to serve the Charlotte metro area by highlighting the importance of how and why physical therapy should be a part of your health and wellness lifestyle. Here we go. Season three, episode two of the Function with Purpose podcast. Dr. Amy here with you today. A cool topic um, that I want to dig into and personally invest in um, is heart rate veritability. Um, At this point in time, as I'm recording this, uh, I do not have one of these bands called a whoop band. Some of y'all might have heard of the whoop band. I'm not sponsored, but by the time this podcast is released, I will probably have one. And the Whoop Band, from what I gather and have looked up on their blog and know that there has been some research put out on this topic of heart rate variability, is that heart rate variability is key in the body's overall fitness level. Um, So I wanted to discuss some things that I personally want to get into and maybe open your eyes to is um, heart rate variability. What is it? Why is it important to know what factors are included with heart rate variability and how can you improve it? And I'm going to go through just a little bit uh, of my experience that I had, I think, at the beginning of 2021, my bout of overtraining. And um, it it just kind of makes me wonder, I wonder if I had that whoop band at that time just to see what the data would have looked like with my heart rate variability. So what is heart rate variability? Um, It's the variance between the time of the beats of your heart. So I found this on the whoop blog. I'm going to quote them. So uh, heart rate variability, if your heart rate is 60 beats per minute, it's not the actual beating once every second. So within that minute, there might be a 0.9 second between each two beats, or perhaps maybe a two second between two other beats. So um, the information that was provided on that website and the information regarding what is heart rate variability is the greater the variability is the more ready your body is to execute um, at a high level at a high level of alertness so um why is it important to track in a little bit more of the definition of the heart rate variability So heart rate variability is actually controlled by your nervous system, specifically the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is broken down into two different nervous systems. Okay, stay with me here. So autonomic nervous system involves the parasympathetic nervous system, meaning your body's ability to control its heart rate at rest, So all of the blood in your body kind of goes to the GI tract or the intense, intense, the (laughs) intent. All righty then. The intestine tract, you know, um, your relaxation state uh, versus the sympathetic route, meaning your fight or flight. So are you going to run away from the bear? The heart rate increases. The blood starts pumping to your muscles. So the heart rate variability involves your autonomic nervous system, which is made up of two different nervous systems. The parasympathetic, which is the resting state of the human body, and the uh, um, sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight. Um, So what we see with the parasympathetic 
parasympathetic nervous system response to heart rate variability is a lower resting heart rate, which then in turn should yield a higher heart rate variability. And then the opposite is flipped for that for the sympathetic nervous system response. So during the sympathetic nervous system response or that fight or flight mode, we should see a higher resting heart rate and a lower heart rate variability. So when you have that higher heart rate variability, it means that your body's responsive to both sets of inputs of that parasympath parasympathetic nervous system as well as that sympathetic nervous system. So remember, those two systems make up one nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. And again, I gathered this information from, from the WHOOP website, and they've been putting out some data on this. So how do you know, how do you know the importance or, or the balance of the heart rate variability? What, what factors are included with this? So you'll notice that if you have a system that's tracking your heart rate variability, or the autonomic nervous system, when you have a high heart rate variability, it means your body is, is responsive to both sets of that parasympathetic and sympathetic response. It's a sign that your nervous system is balanced and that your body's very capable of adapting to its environment and what's thrown at it in order for you to perform its best. So think of it as higher heart rate variability, your body is able to perform at its optimal without being thrown off track. It's fine-tuned. It's laser focus. It's ready to go. So some factors that play a role in this heart rate variability is perhaps your training, your fitness, what do you do for exercise, your lifestyle, i.e. nutrition, and then biological factors. So training, going back to training, the type of intensity that you put your body through, the, pop, the proper balancing of that training, so work to rest ratio. Are you giving yourself rest days or active recovery days? And how much volume do you perform? The second factor, lifestyle, is things that you can mostly control. So lifestyle, your nutrition, alcohol intake, your response to stress levels, your work duties. And then lastly, the third factor that uh, plays a role in heart rate variability is biological. Your biological makeup, your age, sex, genetics, any underlying health conditions can affect the heart rate variability. So I kind of want to get into very quickly a, a little story uh, at the beginning of the year. My body, I didn't realize this until I woke up one morning. I experienced about a 10-day session of overtraining. It was crazy. I never felt this before. Now, I, I grew up playing sports my whole life. I, I played sports in college. And... You would think that someone who has played sports in college, you train at a high intensity, um, you're always training, you're, you're performing that sport, etc. Oh no, this, this was different. So I woke up one morning just super lethargic, um, body aches, joint pain, muscle pain, stiffness. I just felt like poo-poo. I was tired. So... I actually have a YouTube video up on the Fortress uh, YouTube channel, so I'll put the link in the description. You guys can take a peek at it if you want. It's good information so that you kind of can uh, see what other symptoms could be involved with overtraining, but it's totally a thing. So as I recovered, I focused on the things that I could control. My sleep. Can I aim for about eight or so hours of sleep a night? Was I going to bed consistently at the same time every night? Was I waking up? Was I keeping my same pattern? Hydration. I was trying to hit about my 
water intake in ounces per my body weight. So I weigh about 135, 140 pounds. I was trying to focus on that fat uh, hydration daily. I was lowering my volume of training. So basically doing movements based on how my body felt that day. Taking a gut check, not lifting a lot of weight. Um, lowering my volume of training. Um, and, and just gut checking, right? Because I know if I would have done more, I would have paid for it longer and would have been in this overtraining episode for a much longer time. I also obviously focused my nutrition, right? Being consistent, started weighing out my food, not overeating, not undereating, and, and not especially in taking amounts of alcohol. No alcohol. Like, we know that alcohol is detrimental to our ability to perform and also recover. So why would I want to blunt my nervous system when I'm already in a heightened state of overtraining and my body's like, what, what the heck is going on? So no alcohol, that's fine, right? And then trying to keep my daily schedule pattern, waking up at the same time, doing my normal routine, you know, going to work, trying to stay consistent um, and focusing on all of those factors. So going back to those three factors that do play a role in that heart rate variability, training, lifestyle, biological. So my training and lifestyle, I was able to control. Biological, I can't, right? I can't change my age. I'm a female. That's, that's who I am. I can't change genetics. I can't change my DNA and my underlying health conditions. Luckily, I don't have any. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have diabetes. I don't have cholesterol. So... Per the bout of overtraining, I it probably took me about two weeks to kind of get out of this slump. But each day got better and better because I was able to hone in on my lifestyle and training factors because I could control it. So heart rate variability, um, going back to that, um, the, the higher the heart rate variability, the more your nervous system is balanced. And then obviously, specifically, that autonomic nervous system, which, as I mentioned before, is made up of two different systems. Your parasympathetic, which is your resting state, how well your nervous system is able to connect um, to your ability to digest, your ability to breathe in a resting state, and the sympathetic nervous system, so your fight or flight how zoned in and how effective your nervous system is to that. So the, the higher the heart rate variability, the, the more that your body is responsive to both sides of those inputs of that parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system responses. So that's just a sign that the, the higher the heart rate variability, the more your nervous system is balanced, the more that your body is capable of adapting to its environment that's thrown at it. So you can perform at your best. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of input on that. And uh, probably by the time this podcast is released, I will probably have a whoop band. So I'll probably do another episode later on or a coffee talk or something to give you guys some more input on my data that I will be collecting here soon with the use of the, the whoop band. And again, I'm not sponsored by them, but I'll definitely provide you guys some information of where I got all of this great stuff from. But yeah, dig in a little bit more on your health and wellness response, how you recover, Um, being more intentional with your health and wellness, and understanding how your body responds to certain environmental aspects, certain environmental capabilities, right? Fitness and how you're able to keep everything in balance.
That's a wrap for today's episode, Function with Purpose podcast. For more information on this episode, please check out the show notes within your podcast app. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, or drop your comments and questions below. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Thanks for the listen. Pursuit, precision, purpose.